Hello everyone. Thanks for joining today. Today video we'll talk about Oracle Directory Server Enterprise Edition installation and configuration. So I already have two machines right now. I am dot sms.com and ds.iam.com both of these Linux machine are running right now and if you want to understand how to install Linux CentOS or how to configure static IP on those machine uh, I already uploaded two videos for it so one is for installation and another is for static IP configuration so please go through it you will able to get the information what you required so let's start so here what we have to do is first we have to install our first we have to install oracle directory server enterprise edition and installation is pretty easy basically you have to go to the oracle site and then you need to download oracle directory server enterprise edition i'm not pretty sure whether you will able to find it or not because a few years back they have released the updated version of oracle directory server enterprise edition oracle unified directory so if you want to have oracle directory server enterprise edition please check with any of your friend or colleague if they will have the gif file so basically they just you just need a gif file nothing else okay i have already installed this odsc on this machine so what i can do is i'll get odsc zip from here to another machine okay so sun hyphen tse 7 this is the zip we need so what we can do is we can copy this zip file to another host and the IP for another host is so root at the rate 192.168.1.72 and then temp in your case you have to download this GIF from Oracle site and then by using WinSCP you can copy this file to your Linux system however in my case I just have to copy from one host to another so I'm using SCP to copy those okay so it will take some time now let's start with the steps of what we need to do for Oracle Directory Server Enterprise Edition installation so first thing is here you can see in my note basically what I will do is I will attach this document into the description so you guys can visit the description and get this document so first step is make sure host host name is set so how to do that so we'll go to etc hosts and then insert one new line and here we'll map IP with the host name done but right now if you will go with host name it is giving you something like localhost so what you can do is you can set the host name by using this and you are done now henceforth when you will come and go for host name it will give you ds.im.com host name is done another important uh, another important note that you have to make sure is your result.conf uh, should have your gateway address on top and your network manager needs to be up if you have been gone through my static ip configuration video then you would have known we need to make network manager uh, a disable or we need to stop network manager so what we can do is let's stop the network manager so but these steps I have included here so what I can do is first let's add group so these are four command right now and and you know like in Linux you can run 
multiple command at once by using semicolon as a delimiter so what i can do is i rather than going with this i'll simply go with semicolon so you have to follow the order as well and that's what i'm following so let's go with this and run it okay so we are creating a user odsc by which by which we'll install oracle directory server enterprise edition now this is for stopping and disabling the network manager so here you can see we are stopping network manager and disabling network manager and there are two command in a single line separated by semicolon so you can run it multiple times one after another or within the same line by using semicolon so let's execute it done let's execute firewall disable the firewall as well all this i explained in a static ip configuration video so if you want you can check there now go to etcresolve.conf so right now nothing is there so what we can do is we'll insert name server and here we need to have our default gateway address which will act as a dns server so if you want to get more details about it please go through my static ip configuration video off. everything is done okay guys so Basically, we are installing Oracle Directory Server Enterprise Edition. However, this product is actually from Sun. So sometimes if I'll call Sun 1 Directory Server, please try to understand. I mean Oracle Directory Server Enterprise Edition. So now install this unzip command. So just install it. Guys, my system is a bit slow. So it may take some time, but let's see okay now again these are the prerequisite of actually these are the packages that we need on our linux system basically if you will not go with this packages then what will happen is your dsconf will throw some sort of sorry dsconf will throw some sort of error something like error while loading shared libraries something like that so we need to have this and it totally depends upon the upon the type of os which you have installed so in my case i have installed minimal so it will have minimal packages whenever i will go for any installation of application i have to make sure the packages prerequisite packages has been installed already if not then it will give me issue so what i gain i can do is i'll have all this in a single line separated by semicolon and in proper order so let's go to this and done okay so now we'll be good with create instance and suffix but before that let's complete it okay now let's open a new window ds.iam.com and here we have this zip distribution oh sorry it is not there let me see where it is Oh, it has been sent to temp so what we can do is move temp to this okay so we have now unzip so guys uh, i have two system because 
first we'll import data onto one directory server and then we'll import data on another directory server and later we'll have replication between two nodes if you are planning to have only one node then you do need replication and in that case you can skip the replication part of this video which will be later okay okay so here dsee7 is there so what we can do is we can make a directory make directory apps oracle sorry we have to use hyphen p option because we are creating multiple directory okay now move dsc7 into apps oracle done so now what we will do is we already created a user odse correct at the beginning of this video so what we will do is we'll change the ownership of apps directory slash apps directory to odse so something like this ch own hyphen r means recursive whatever directory inside apps for those also ownership will be changed so odse domain users so that will be our group name so done now what we can do is we can switch to odse sudo su hyphen odse or you can log in with odse as well so up to you now what we can do is so set path environment variable so that you can use oracle directory server related command uh, directly you need not to go to a particular path and then uh, you have to execute the command so what you can do is into your bash profile so if you will go to your home directory then you will have a hidden file called ls hyphen l a t r so here this bash profile is your profile so what you can do is you will have so here you can see these are the <clears throat> default path so what you can do is you can have odse related uh, odse related path into your path environment variable and when i say odse related then what does it mean is if you will go to apps oracle dse7 bin then these are the command correct so one is dse bin then you have dsrk bin so two path you need to have and for including path the delimiter what we use in linux is colon so again go to bash profile then in the in the last of this path go to the end and done so right now if you will use dsadm it will not be able to execute so you will get command not found so what you can do is just log in once again by this user odse but what i can do in this scenario i will load this by using source just reload it and we are done so here you can see still it is showing dsadm so now go there and why it is giving error because we have we missed to give bin now let's source it run it and you can see it is working good so let's start with instance creation so now the question is why we have chosen 1389 or 1636 why not the default port like 389 or 636 because if you will go with service 
port less than 1024 then you need privilege access basically you need root access on the system on the linux machine but what happens in organization usually you will not get root access so yeah let's so i don't think we have created this directory so what we can do is make directory done and then we can run this command give a password confirm the password and now go to start let's start okay so now let's create suffix and to create suffix whatever password of directory manager let's create a file so what we can do here is cat txt I'm saving this password in one of the file and then I will be using this command so if you will see this command then what is there in this command is create suffix so it will create the suffix hyphen i basically uh, it will just ignore the confirmation so there are some command when you will execute it it will ask you for the confirmation so if we are going with hyphen i option then it will ignore that option to get the confirmation so yeah i don't want to get that confirmation prompt okay so suffix is done so you have the suffix now here in step d what is there a stop instance and then import is there so guys here you have to make sure whether you are going to have your environment with multiple node um, there would be more than one host having oracle directory server in replication mode okay or there could be possibility where you will have only one node or one host having the data in that case you can go ahead with a stop and then you can just import the data but let's say in my case so let's say you have to have only one node so simply just execute it after stopping the instance and then start it and you are done with all your configuration you will be able to connect and you will get the data as well okay but in my case i will have two nodes so here you can see right now i'm on ds.im.com however im.sms.com is also another node where i already installed and configured suffix of odsc now i want to have these two node in replication for odsc instance so what i can do is first i'll define replication that's what i have given here so what i can do is I'll go ahead with this and here you can see you have to have a unique ID replication ID so here I'm using one so yeah again hyphen I I don't want to confirm those uh, it will ask for whether you want to proceed or all this so I'll go with this and what it is saying okay so what i can do here is so i have to provide username and the password i'll go ahead here okay similarly i will do here as well So name and the password the bind dn and the password similarly i will do it for after port just give credential username and the password okay so yeah so now run it 
and since we are going with hyphen i so i don't want to ask for all this so uh, you do want to confirm and all those things so i am going with hyphen i and when we are going with hyphen i option make sure to provide bind dn and the password so basically we are executing by using dscon so let's use super admin and it will allow for enable replication on dc example dccom so here you can see this is im.sms.com so this is destination so host name it will take the source correct so i have not given host name like ds dot i have used rather in command itself so what i can do but i have to make sure im.sms.com is up so what i can do is process status grep hyphen i slap d and it is running so i'm good to run this great it's done so these are the steps which is already done now what i have to do is i have to again enable the replication on another host that is im.sms.com so what i will do is i'll go to im.sms.com and then i'll run it and i have to make sure again pwd.txt is here so what i can do is this is my password okay okay great so now what i will do is i'll create the replication agreement and in that case the destination will be ds.sms.com because we will create replication agreement on im.sms.com so hyphen h host name will give that value uh, im.sms.com and this will be the destination now let's run it great done so now what we have to do is come to this machine and just stop your ds.iam.com so execute this command and stop it now go to iam.sms.com and you are good to import the data so what we will do is we'll again come here and it is yeah stop it because it is also running and then since again since we are using ds adm import so when we are using ds adm then make sure your instance is down and then go ahead with import and my example dot ldf so basically you will find your example.ldiff under dsee7 resources ldiff dc example dccom is the base dn or suffix hyphen i again i don't want to get all those prompt whether you want to agree and all those so i gone with hyphen i and it will import the data okay so let's start this instance great started now i am dot sms dot com here you have to come and you can see all this data are here good now what we will do is we'll take export of data from here and that will be imported on another machine so these are the replications so you cannot even if example dot ldf will have the same data uh, I can make use of same example dot ldf on ds dot iam dot com, but that is not going to work because that will not have the replication information. When I wanted to import the same set of data on another node, which I wanted to be in replication with this node, then I have to make sure there needs to be replication information, and that's why I will take export of data from this machine. So we can take online export. 
because let's say some of the client wants to make use of the service so at the same time i don't want to interrupt them okay so i can take the export of ldf right now and let's say it take 30 minutes to import on another node and there could be possibility for these 30 minutes there would be more modification or addition on this instance so once another node will active automatically those data data will also be replicated to another node so you need not to worry about uh, delta data so what we can do now is we'll take export of data <clears throat> i think here export ldf is already there so let me remove now what i have to do is dsconf export hyphen h and here you can see we'll go ahead with this command and you need not to worry about command because all this command will be in description just go with yes i would have used export and then hyphen i option then i would not get this type of confirmation but that's okay so we got the exported data now so i'll Copy this on another node, scp export dot ldf uh, one nine. Okay, so user ODSE at the rate one ninety two dot one sixty eight dot one dot seventy two, and in temp directory we'll have the data. Okay, done. So now this machine is shut down. So now what we have to do is we have to import the data, correct? So same DS ADM import we can use, but we will not import this data. We will import the exported file which we got from im.sms.com. So what I will do is I'll go with temp and export dot and done. Okay, great. Done. Now I will start it. Okay, so now we have data on this machine as well so what we can do is we'll go here ds.im.com and we have the data now what we can do is here if you let's let's make some change so we have imported data on another node so here if let's say you are making change in ahel user uh, with the given name let's say add xyz at the end so here you can see it is not allowing you for modification what it is saying is uh ldap error code 10 so some issue with the referral so what happens is it will not take update any update in that case basically what you have to do is you have to run this command I'll give this command. So right now your node is not accepting any update. So you can do search and everything. However, it will not accept any update. Means no addition, no modification, nothing. Okay. Once again, run it. Awesome. Okay. Now let's click submit okay so here again uh, we have to accord replication agreement and we are going with hyphen i and given bind dn and the password and here destination is im.sms.com so we are running from the source ds.im.com same we will be doing for another node So here again the destination is ds.im.com okay 
so now let's see okay after running so now we have the data so we just have to run a card replication agreement after importing the data so it will accordance with the destination server okay so we have now both the node in replication so there will not be errors further errors so now next on this machine we are connected to im.sms.com and the user is a hall so let's make something updated okay uh, and this is for sn surname okay go to ds.im.com and here here it is updated so so you are good got it so you just have to run this a card a card replication agreement from both the node and then you will be done Anyway, I'm going to have all this command on uh, in the description and guys here you may need to install NTP server. So uh, this is for network time and uh, uh, why we need to have this because uh, both the node needs to be in the same time zone because both are in replication, correct? So needs to be... Uh, the, replication might not work if they will have uh, the system will be in different time zone or if there is time difference between this system so both of my system in in est zone so i am going to have uh, this detail as well as a option so you can have ntp server and set up all this uh, there are situation where you know like sometimes there is an issue where uh, one node is behaving uh, uh, not behaving properly in that case what you have to do is you have to take the export from one of the node then need to import on another node uh, so you have to get the correct data means first you have to identify which has the most correct data and from that node you have to get the uh, export of data and need to import on another node correct so so when when you are importing then then there might be the possibilities your uh, node will not take the update so again you have to run this command i'm going to give this command okay and i'll i'll give all this detail into the description okay so if you want me to uh, make a video on restoration or enabling replication by using binary backup or db backup do please uh, let me know in the comment and i will i will uh, uh, try to make another video on this please do let me know if you want me to make video on some selected topics okay thanks again guys but please do subscribe the channel okay thank you